Hey everyone, I just thought I'd take you through a bit of a setup for a session. Uh, it's the day before we record um, Huey Lewis in the News, The Power of Love. Um, I'm going to sing it, which means someone else has to play keyboards. Um, that will be Stuart Day. You've seen him play before, play keyboards on uh, Cold as Ice and uh, played the melodica on And We Danced. <clears throat> he also played bass and guitar on a bunch of tracks as well. Fantastic um, multi-instrumentalist. So he's going to uh, use my Roland keyboard. I'll have to set it up, of course, with the sound. So he's at home learning the track on his rig, and I'll just he can just walk in and walk out uh, using my, my rig. I also need to start off with what I have it as a, a blank template. Um, the, the black template uh, in Logic here I use for um, I use the Presonus Studio Live. It's a 32 input um, interface for all the inputs, and I use my um, Steinberg UR824 as the output to hear it. So because I've got lots of um, in-ear monitor mixes and everything that I can do through the Presonus software as well. So uh, of course. I'm going to probably run a bit of time lapse so you can check it out. Um, me setting up the room. Um, that will go through all of the lighting, the colors that I've chosen. Uh, <clears throat> I use these uh, LED uh, Yulanzi light blocks. So these ones are, it's got a bit of a rubber diffuser on it. So these guys are about the size, you know, smaller than a cell phone. And you can just put them on to any color you like and uh, any brightness and of course they do also fit um, on clamps and stuff that I have around just for extra color. Um, these have made a big difference to the videos lately I'm sure that you've noticed so instead of uh, lighting the room, flooding the room with lots and lots of lights which uh, we do use these type of you know photography lights which are you know, white to warm white. Um, and these guys are all, uh, I have one directly above me and a couple on the sides. Uh, these guys, and I've got heaps and heaps of these batteries. Um, I used to run them via power supplies, but it was just too many wires, and our camera guy's tripping over wires, so I just run these guys now with a battery, which lasts for most of the session. And I can adjust how warm or cold the light is, of course. Um, many of you have already used these, and of course the brightness. We generally don't run these too bright. They're just working on the sides and just to make sure everyone's lit, um, lit a bit because the room is pretty naturally colored the same way that you see it. Um, so I bring down the lights and we run some colors. We have you know, the little birdie cans on as well, just to make sure that the drums and bass and everyone's sort of got a bit of light on them. Um, so there is no window in the studio. It's my basement studio. So we need to, you know, create the vibe with lights. I even have uh, a new strip on the piano now. Oh, if I can just find the remote. <clears throat> Over here. I can adjust these guys uh, using my mobile phone as well. So the piano now has a strip. Um, and not sure whether you can see that that sucker, but that one I uh, can also light the piano and light you know with any color. That's a pretty cool effect. I reckon um, that's that's making a fairly big difference as well. Um, the vocal booth. I'm wondering what to do with um, <laughs> with the colors and stuff in there, but I, th I do have lights in there as well on a DMX controller um, up against the back wall. So. Um, it's all really a, a, a huge combination of things to set up for one of these songs. It's not just the sound. Um, we have, you know, in the template I have uh, my general template of things. I've got my drums and the overheads, the hats mic, the bass. Uh, whoever's playing uh, guitar, which on this one we've got Stefan doing lead, and I'll probably have to have another one that will be uh, crafty. Crazy Crafty, uh, and uh, of course I'll be singing lead, I'll be down the bottom, we'll have Stefan and uh, Crafty singing, 
with me as well. Uh, and uh, Mario is playing drums. I may have him singing. So I'm still on a blank session. It's still called blank session. And um, the keys, uh, I can put that up here next to the guitars. So vocals all the way down the bottom. And then I would just simply go file, save as, and I'll just save it in, in amongst you know the, the sessions as the power of love. And it would move on from there. So uh, audio setup. I'll have to obviously get all of the, the stands and leads and microphones out and place them for the drums ready for the kit will rock up today. Sometime Mario generally drops off the kit the day before because we record during the day. I drop off my son at school and uh, come here and everyone rocks up and we are probably done. If we're doing a single song, we're probably done by 12.30, 1, 1 o'clock perhaps. And uh, if we're doing two songs, which does happen often, uh, we will probably be, we'll stop for lunch about 12.30, go upstairs and have some lunch and uh, then we'll come back in and we'll all, we'd be done by 2 o'clock. Uh, sometimes we run a little late um, over 2 but uh, generally about that so it all depends on the complexity of the song. Uh, if you have more moving parts like more singers who require in-ear monitor mixes to keep comfortable, more microphones, more parts, more players. Obviously, it gets more complicated and we need to run through the songs. We learn these songs uh, like I'm learning. Uh, I've know, I know Huey Lewis and the news, The Power of Love, very well. I mean, I know it to listen to. I love the song and the band, always been a massive fan. Um, and so um, it is quite a sing for me. <clears throat> it's in Kia C. It's right up in my... Uh, range it does hit a C note on the top that's uh, I only have to do that a couple of times but uh, that's a big thing for me to do multiple takes it's right up in my belt range so um, I'm gonna enjoy singing it. it'll be a great um, a great time um, and there is some really um, cool harmonies in the bridge which I'll have to work out here today on the piano and I'll send uh, crafty and um, and Stefan a little audio message uh, to their cell phones with me singing and playing go okay here's your part and I'll sing it and so they'll learn that um, you know probably just listen to that in the car on the way here as long as you know we all just learn the song in the original key original arrangement when the boys rock up I might make some changes on um, on the arrangement we'll extend or chop things in and out we might change a chord here and there I don't like to change it up too much um, I definitely want to just respect the original um, as much as I possibly can um, and as well as mixing it I also want to respect that and um, I want to um, make it sound recognizably like the original at least so you know when you hear it you're gonna go okay these guys are in a basement studio they're pulling it off um, and you know the sound is, is pretty pretty close so I am just one guy uh, doing the best I can but I am surrounded by fantastic team, a great crew of uh, singers and players, as you know, um, and that's probably why you're watching this to uh, get a bit of a, a, you know, an idea about how we do it. So I'm going to stop uh, blabbing and get working. Uh, it's 9 a.m. and uh, I've only just really just got in here and set up this quickly. Uh, I do have a camera that I can just sort of follow around as I'm doing stuff and I'll take a bit of extra footage and I'll let this camera here go on uh, um, on some time lapse so you'll sort of see me running around setting up things and um, tomorrow um, my cell phone will become the camera and uh, it's <laughs> we'll see if we can pull off another another great song that you're going to enjoy. So. Thanks for watching so far. Here comes the fun bit. There's another little uh, thing that I have hidden at the back of the studio. You guys don't see this sort of side of the studio much, but it's over here. And I have all of my equipment, mic stands, camera gear, mics, um, cases and stuff like all stored in here. So this side's for all the mic stands, that side over there for all of the leads and, um, and mics. So, that's why, you know, that's where I store everything behind these uh, panels. So this sort of um, gives me a lot of storage behind there. I mean, 
the studio is only so big, right? So, and I've got to put all of this gear somewhere. Okay, nerdy Darren with glasses back again. Um, another trick uh, that we use here, well, it's not a trick, it's a tool, um, is, well, I use my cell phone, my iPhone 12 Pro, um, the, hopefully to get to 14 pretty soon. Um, the 12 Pro has three different lenses on it, of course, but it's a really uh, a powerful camera. And uh, from, there's a company called Moment, um, these guys here, American company, and uh, they sell lenses and kits and camera stuff. So these guys are very, very handy. They, um, you get a custom case for your iPhone or whatever phone you've got. Um, and these anamorphic lens, it's what you're actually watching me through right now is another iPhone with an anamorphic lens. So the lens just clips into the, the case. And with it, uh, I also use an app called, so I can find it, Filmic Pro. Filmic Pro app um, basically adapts to, you know, it, it squeezes um, and adapts the, the camera's lens into that. I can focus on different things and lock the focus and I can change the ISO, you know, how much light's coming in as well. I can adjust the white balance and, you know, all of that thing as well. It's really a fantastic little tool. Uh, this app here is essential as well. So um, it's anamorphic, which is, gives us that sort of wide screen because rather than have a wide lens, that's like a fisheye lens in a GoPro, that's how we do it. So we use a cell phone and a moment anamorphic lens. Check them out, they're uh, shopmoment.com and there's no uh, kickback for that. That's a free tip. A uh, fantastic little tool that can turn your cell phone into a, a pro looking camera very, very fast. So there you go, moment lens. I just thought I'd show you quickly uh, the GoPros that I use. I use Hero 8 and, um, and a Hero 9. One day I'll afford the new 11. Um, I use um, these things called a media mod. So if you're not um, familiar with GoPros, um, or you might just know about these, a media mod is like a, a an outer casing. Um, so inside, I've taken the door off, the clip door off the, the side where your battery and your SD card inserts, and uh, pop it into this mod. And it's like an outer case. So it's, uh, it's got a little USB-C that sort of pops into the side. Normally you just open the lid to charge the GoPro this way. Um, and that's all you got, it's just one plug on it to charge. Um, and that does do multiple things, but now it's in the mod. I have a microphone input, a HDMI, a HDMI input, mini HDMI, output, sorry, and a, um, a USB-C to charge it. So I can keep the GoPro alive for a, for a lot longer, well, forever, as long as I've got a power supply plugged into it. And I can feed uh, HDMI feed from it to a camera switcher, uh, just as a live feed, um, or and I can put a stereo mic in it, um, you know, and sort of clip it on the top so it can be really, you know, I can do multiple things so it can have much better sound. These media mods have really changed the things up because obviously you can still uh, use your um, arms to clip it on just about anything. Uh, I use stands like upright stand. <clears throat> So this is just a generally a mic stand, and I have uh, just have an adapter that clips on the top, screws on the top, and there's your GoPro thing right there. Just clip him in. And if you haven't lost it, just tighten him up in there, and that is something that I can put anywhere within the room to, without a tripod. Tripods, people trip over them and stuff all the time. So this way, it's just a heavy, a heavy based, round based stand. And I can sort of just 
bring it up and down and, and the adapter can really put it in any direction as well. So this is the way that I use my extra cameras. So there you go, GoPro, medium on. Okay, let's begin. Now there's lots of stuff all around the studio and I've got to, uh, I've got to film here, so I've got to make sure everything's set up and tidy as, as much as I can. So first things first too, the, the, the keyboard rig has to be moved uh, to the back because I've got both guitar players up the front, Stefan on the left, Crafty on the right, um, as you see it. Piano's got junk all over it. I'm giving it a bit of a clean up and um, put the keyboard, controller keyboard that I pat the dog in the minute, put the controller keyboard that I'm not using on top of the piano. So at the moment I'm just using short cables, the short, um, I've cut some, um, made my own short custom cables here so that I didn't have lots of wires everywhere um, all over the floor. So these are for drum microphones. I'm um, just putting floor mic uh, label on that one. So because um, Drummers come in and they've got a bunch of microphones hanging around and if it says snare, rack, floor tom, they'll know where to clip them on. So these guys are pros, they've done it before as well and they certainly do make my job easier for me, providing I label the microphones. So um, I'm setting up a light over the keyboards here as well. So everyone's got sort of a, a, a light, a mood light on them somewhere. Um, the booth will eventually, the light will be switched off in the booth and I'll just have the up lights happening on the backdrop. And here I'm just checking input um, numbers to make sure that I'm plugging everything into the drop box uh, into the correct number. Um, that would be embarrassing to have the kick drum in the hi-hat um, channel, etc. So I'm putting in the two condensers, uh, the Sennheiser E914s that go over the kit. There's a 57 Shaw that I've just set up down there for Stu, uh, for Stefan's uh, amp. He um, sounds great through that. So um, there's some keyboards here. Now they're not going to reach to my interface, so I'm going to get a DI direct box, put the left and right into that, put the into the drop box. So the two lines coming out of my keys are going in there. Then I've just checked who uh, what. Line is for the vocals, pop that in as well. This is fun, I'm in a hurry, check it out. Just, <laughs> here we go. Uh, boom stands, can't use upright stands with people playing guitar, so you need a boom stand, just like that, one with an arm, that brings the microphone, gives the guitarist room to strum or play the guitar without banging into the upright mic stand. So this one here is for Stefan. Um, he's got the nice silver Tama stand there, my fave. And um, this is going to be my microphone in the middle and upright. I've got, I've chosen a uh, a chrome one for this because of the reflection lights and stuff like that. I think the chrome one will look good. Um, plus, the you know Huey Lewis used to always play with the upright stand and sort of carry it around with him. So I'm going to try and give that a go. Um, totally stealing all of his ideas, um, including his song. So, um, well, <clears throat> paying tribute. Here is another uh, microphone. These are all E945s. Give the doggy a bit of an itch. Yes, he's good. Little spoodle. Uh, and um, just checking up, setting up a uh, the Tom mic there. All right, so what have we got here? I'm thinking, what have I forgotten? We need to put in a line for Crafty's amp. I'm texting him saying, do you want a mic or a line? He texts back and says, I'm going to bring my amp, so put a mic on me. So I've just given him one single line, fed it through the piano. There's his answer, okay. And I go and get the Sennheiser, uh, I think it's the 900 Series 06, I think, for the flat microphone for his amp. So that one's there. Um, there it is. Checking to see what's the front, what's the back. Check, check, chook, chook, chook. Yep, it's all working. Sit it on the piano, ready to go. Oh, it's starting to look good now. I've got some lights. I'm just setting my IKEA lights, those blue ones. There are two more uh, bulbs that are connected to that wireless system. I'm um, out of shot. Um, and so they sort of create a bit of a mood. I'm just thinking, what's what do I need here? Maybe I go for a sort of a, 
a pinky purple to offset the blue. <clears throat> so I'm sort of setting all the lights to that similar color. I, you know, I'll probably be changing my mind, but just put them all to the same color for now so I can set up something. The keyboard one, I'm just setting up the piano one via the app, and there'll be the one in the back corner as well, same sort of thing via the app. Turn on the up lights in, in, the, um, in the booth. Getting pretty close now. My GoPro is going to be crazy now, wondering, uh, trying to adjust to the colors in the room. It's so it's not quite um, what you're going to see, but it's a little bit orangey. Um, but you can see it's trying um, its best to stay with all of the colors. Uh, the dog's confused as well. So I've just turned off all, turn on all of the LED lights as well, so that you can see. Um, you know, I can basically do a, a check. How different is it? when I open up and let the natural light through, it's crazy, isn't it? The camera adjusts. Uh, this is the GoPro watching this, and that's why I use an iPhone with the Filmic Pro app, because I don't want the white balance to continuously change like this. Crazy. Well, there you go. That's me. Done. Sorted it out. I certainly hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope that it wasn't too long and boring. Um, I'm just trying to show you guys inside the machine how it all works. It is sort of complicated and I'm trying to make it um, fun and uh, a little bit less nerdy, but that's who I am. So, so far we're sort of ready. I've got, um, you know, everything just about there. And tomorrow morning, after I drop my, my boy at school, I'll come back here and a whole bunch of people are going to uh, rock up and we'll start cranking out this song. So between now and then, I've got to make sure I know all my words. I'm ready to belt out the song. Um, better have a decent shirt. Better not screw up those words. Um, there's pressure on all of us. You know, you don't want to screw it up for the other guys. So if you make a mistake, especially when people are hearing you, I mean, we have to stop and go over it again. And that means more take, more time, more everything. And not everyone can stay for the whole duration. There's a lot of pressure. So getting towards the last 15 minutes someone needs to leave, we really start feeling the pressure. And you uh, know that we're just about to done it. We've probably got one good take in the two or three or four that we've done, but we know we can do it better. We've got a little bit longer and someone says, let's just do another one. Let's just try and you know f fix that bit or whatever, right? and then um, we just go for it. So the takes that you generally see are like that. They're the, the last take or sometimes the second last take where we're really sweating those last few bits, giving it 200% and you know, we're having a lot of fun and the pressure is, is our rush. Um, that's why we do this, I suppose. It's, you know, that's the whole concept of this where sweating it all together having as much fun, cranking out that song in that little tight room, feeling all our instruments, you know, through our bodies because the, the toms are beating and we're feeling it. You know, it's just just a really cool job. I got the best job. And I'm so appreciative of everyone um, sharing the videos, watching the videos, even watching these uh, behind-the-scenes videos. I hope that this stuff is valuable to you. So uh, I'll be making some more and we'll be having a chat with the artists and that as well. So... Stick around. Thanks for your time. Bye now.